Welcome everybody to Backwoods University. Today's uh, class is going to be on flintlock muzzle loaders. Now uh, you may be asking yourself, what is a muzzle loader? How does a muzzle loader differ from uh, a modern firearm? Well, uh, the main uh, difference in a traditional uh, muzzle loader versus a modern firearm is there is no shell to it. Uh, there is no preloaded shell. What you're doing is you are actually loading the powder, the wadding material, and the projectile down through the muzzle of the rifle. And you're going to build that in. The powder goes in first as a measured charge then your wad or your patch, then your projectile, which might be a round ball, or it might be, in this case, is a smooth bore. So this will shoot both round ball and shot. So um, some wadding material, uh, a load of shot in here, uh, some, another uh, uh, something to cover the shot, and then you're going to use what they call a ramrod, and you're going to compress that load down in the barrel of your muzzle loader. Now, um, the gun itself, at that point, although it's loaded, it will not fire because there is no ignition system to set off that charge in the barrel. Uh, Ignition systems for muzzle loaders vary. A modern muzzle loader has uh, uses something similar to a modern shell in a, and has a primer. There's also cap locks, which use a uh, a little uh, cap uh, that goes over what they call a nipple. And then there is flint locks. Okay, flint locks. Uh, it, the, the theory behind a flintlock is, is pretty simple. Um, to get them to work properly, sometimes, depending on moisture and other factors, isn't quite so simple. But there's a hammer, and that hammer holds a piece of flint. Now it's, uh, the flint is harder than the steel in the frizzen. It's clamped in a, a pair of jaws on a flintlock. In this case, there's a, a piece of lead that holds that sharpened flint in the jaws of the hammer. Then there is a pan, what they call a pan. And this is where you would put a small amount of, of powder in the pan. Next to the pan is what they call a touch hole. And that is nothing more than a very small hole that runs through the barrel and would come up to where the charge is, where you've loaded your powder and your projectile. Then the last item is what they call a frizzen. A frizzen is a high carbon uh, steel and that clamps down over the pan. And how this works is when you Pull the hammer back, squeeze the trigger, the flint will strike the frizzen, causing a small piece of that steel to be cut off by the sharpened stone. The energy behind that heats up that piece of steel to red hot. It drops down in the pan that you have loaded with powder causing a flash uh, uh, the powder to go off part of that flash will go through the touch hole and ignite your powder and your projectile which you have under pressure causing a explosion and that will then send the projectile out the barrel. Now when everything's working well this happens in a fraction of a second. Uh, it, it 
it all happens and it works beautifully. However, moisture, as you can imagine, affects a flintlock considerably. Also, the uh, sharpness of your flint. Uh, there's other factors uh, that could cause it to misfire. And that's where you get that, uh, that term, a flash in the pan, <laughs> and your gun didn't go off. Um, but if it's a, uh, if everything goes well, it goes off and everything's good. Now on a rainy day, on a day that's uh, kind of rainy, you want to protect your pan and all this. And one method of protecting it is using what they call a uh, cow's knee. And that's just a piece of uh, leather that's kind of been sewn in the same shape as your, as your lock here. And it, uh, it's been waxed with, you know, some sort of beeswax or something like that. And that is placed over the lock and uh, protects it from the rain. Uh, on the stand, uh, sitting, waiting for uh, a game to come by and it's raining or whatever, I just loosely lay this cow's knee over the lock. Um, if you tie it down <laughs> and uh, try to get it off quickly, it's not going to come off. But uh, the, the whole idea behind this is to keep your powder dry. So let's, uh, let's fire it and see what... Now, uh, to demonstrate uh, for the class here, um, we moved down to the range. I got a good backstop here. It's a safe area to shoot in. And the first uh, thing I'm just going to show you is just the powder in the pan. Uh, there is no load in the barrel, but we want to be safe. So we're down on the range here. So um, let's see if, uh, how this works for the video. Let's see how we can uh, show everybody. Okay. Okay, as you can see, the flint hit the frizzen, caused a, a uh, small heated red hot piece of that frizzen to drop down in the pan, which caused the, just the powder in the pan to go off, and that went down the touch hole, and had we had a charge in, in, the, in the rifle, it would have gone off, hopefully. I've charged the barrel. I've got the powder, the wadding, the shot, and the overwad in it. I've got uh, powder in the pan. We're back at the range here, so like I said, it's nice and safe. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to see how quickly it goes off between the flash in the pan, the pan going off, and the charge, if all goes well. You ready, everybody? Everybody watching? There you have it. Flint lock uh, muzzle loader. Now, before we end the class today, uh, to those of you who are new to muzzle loaders, to black powder uh, firearms, black powder is extremely corrosive. And uh, you need to clean your, uh, your barrel, your lock, touch hole. All those areas need to be cleaned as soon as possible after you fire it. Um, don't let it sit for a long time that that corrosive black powder will will attract moisture it will cause corrosion in your barrel it cause all kinds of problems one thing with muzzle loading uh, firearms they need to be maintained they need to be cleaned and they need to be checked even uh, even if you haven't fired in a, in a while uh, you want to go and check the barrel out maybe run a patch or two down it uh, the cleaner you keep your muzzle loader, the less problems you'll have. 
Thanks everybody for stopping by the class today. I'd like to thank uh, my videographer today, Michael. Uh, it made my life easier. Uh, he did all the videoing uh, today, which is a big, big help. So thank you, Michael. And I'd like to thank all the guys that stopped by the class today. Uh, hopefully you now have a little better understanding of what a flintlock rifle is and how it works. So until next time, thanks again, everybody, and uh, take care.